about to record this as a podcast? Uh, uh, duh. Okay. Damn, my life is too built for that. Yo. Uh. Hit the thistle dance like I'm Mac Drake. Can't stop looking at it, know the racks safe. Elevate and only half bait. I'm the Tiger Woods of the crap game. It all wash away with the champagne. Cause I bit down on it, left a bad taste. Where is Reverend Al Sharpton in the last days? Another bitch baptized, victim of the wave. Possessed, trying to get a nigga solar praise. Fool for the thought, he was so the same. I'm just trying to rise on the apple place. This hot Jay Z handle, yay. Though Lovelli might have sounded like a Yeezy quote. She a needy hoe, hit her with a peasy quote. Ended on a high note, something CC wrote. Crowns for the kings that BB so. Being misled, I was told things. BB King dead on May 14th. Solitary, never been quarantined. We still going up May 14th. I'm causing problems. You'll get us all killed. Give them what you got and get them out of here. Shut the fuck up, fat man. This ain't none of your goddamn business. Be cool, honey bunny. Be cool. No problem. I got it under control. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, or whenever the fuck y'all niggas like to listen to this shit, I'm Meech, and this is a motherfucking drug table talk podcast with Meech and Spiff, remember, we don't sell drugs, we sell knowledge and slang game, man, you know what, I appreciate all 13 of y'all for always showing up, showing love, giving feedback when it's due, you feel me, man, I welcome y'all back, you know, shout out to all 13 of the you know weekly listeners you know i do this because of y'all man i do this because you know people actually you know tune into this shit every week man and i'm most gracious and most thankful you know for all 13 of y'all for always showing up every week to listen to this shit man man i can't even lie you know if y'all are familiar with, you know, our, you know, recording schedule, man, you know, we record every, you know, Sunday and I can't lie, man, this is a fucking beautiful, beautiful, beautiful day out here, man. Random as hell, man. I'm in the back of like a Target parking lot, man. It's a nice, beautiful, well, it's a, quite a few like little trees and shit, you know, little white flowers on the trees and shit. But it's nice and peaceful, man. The sun is shining on me, baby. You feel me? But, um, you know, earlier I was supposed to, um, you know, meet up with Solo and shit. Because, you know, Spiff is always at work and shit. And, you know, we were supposed to record some. But, you know, some shit happened or whatever. You know, but, you know, it is what it is, man. The show must go on, man. I was just going to, like, release, you know... Like one of the little podcasts that we had in the tuck But I felt like I was doing a disservice to y'all, man I felt like I was doing a disservice to the people Because I had a I had a few thoughts on my mind, man And I felt like I needed to get those out And I would hate to like re-rock some old shit, man You know, even though it'd be new to y'all But me personally, I feel like I'd be doing a disservice if You know, I release some old shit But, you know I had a, the whole game, you know, back on the pod. Hopefully next, you know, for the for the pod, you know, next week or whatever. But yeah, man. Um, I kind of just wanted to to rap with y'all real quick, man, because um, this morning, man, I I woke up, man. I woke up and you know, excuse me if y'all hear the road and shit in the background, but. 
I woke up this morning and shit, man, and usually I don't I don't really remember my dreams like that. And for some odd reason, man, I remembered, you know, this dream like like I felt like it was <laughs> like a memory, like something that just happened to me. And and you know how they usually say like doctors or if you ever look into dreams like you don't rip like you have like a thousand dreams per night. However, you only remember the ones that you um, can remember from right before you woke up. However, I felt like this dream went on for so long and it might have been for like literally maybe 20 or 30 seconds. But however, I felt like I was in that dream for so long and just to kind of like tell y'all man i had a dream that the world was like coming to the end and it was me you know some of the gang or whatever we like in the car from what i can remember and it's like we riding around like downtown but for some odd reason like downtown just looked crazy if y'all remember What's that? What's that whole ass uh, movie with Will Smith, man? Was it was it I Am Legend or some shit like that? When they had like motherfucking uh, zombies and shit. But if you can remember, the world was going back to like its natural state, whereas like regular roads and concrete and shit like that, you know, trees and and grass is starting to you know come through the through the concrete or whatever, and it felt just like that. It's like we in the car and I can see like looking out the window, like in the middle of the road, it's like grass and weeds and shit like that. However, in the middle of it, it's like zombies and like monsters and shit. And from what I can remember, you know, in that moment, like I was not scared. I was not shocked. I was. It was for some odd reason, it felt peaceful. Like, I felt calm in that moment. Like, in that moment, it was, like, no type of panic. Like, we weren't running. You know, niggas had guns, but we wasn't shooting. And it was just, like, we just in the... And just in the thick of shit. Zombies going around. You know, we ducking through. You know, hopping out the car, man. And I knew in that moment... We got out the car and we went into a building. And that building, of course, fucking zombies and uh, people down at the bottom and shit. But I remember going up and we looking for a particular book. And I asked one of the guys that I'm, you know, that I'm with, you know, like, dog, what the fuck? What book are we looking for? And, you know, he just like, yo, we just looking for a book. Whatever I can't even remember, but we finally find a book, and I remember going through the book, and it said something about the the polar ice caps is melting, you know, global warming, this type of crazy shit, and just talking about like once the polar ice caps melt, you know, it's gonna cause floods and all the shit that's been up under ice, you know, back from prehistoric times, all types of different bacterias and diseases and this, that, and the third. It's going to come out. It's just going to just fucking just destroy the world or whatever. But as I go back to that feeling at that moment, like, it felt normal. I felt at ease for some odd reason. Even when I woke up because at that point that's when i woke up and i was like man man that's cool (laughs) you feel me but for some odd reason like i felt intrigued to want to know more about this particular dream man so in that moment i just i just typed i just typed in my phone like you know dreams about the world ending and shit like that and like when, like the first definition or the first meaning that I read about the world ending, they're saying that this means that it's a lot of stress in my life or that I may be going through a very stressful situation. So I might be feeling like it's the end of the world. 
And they go on to say, like, there are many reasons as to why these dreams may may come about, whether it's like divorce or financial problems or death of somebody, etc. But I would think like when having a dream like that, I would I would feel some type of panic or worry or something like that. However, I felt peaceful. I felt calm. And it might just be me because I feel like in some of my most stressful or or trying times, I try my best to be even keel, calm. I tend to have that feeling like it's going to get better eventually, you feel me? No matter how bad the situation may be, and sometimes I might feel like it's the end of the world, I always feel like it's going to get better eventually. It may not be today, may not be tomorrow, however, it's going to be sometime soon. And it's like, what the fuck is a dream? You feel me? I even I even looked at it, man. I went on <laughs> in my in my first like five to ten minutes of me waking up from that bullshit, like I instantly like jumped on my phone and just started researching shit. And according to like WebMD, you know, dreams are stories and images that our mind create when we sleep. They can be vivid. They can make you feel happy, sad, or scared. You know, and they may seem confusing or perfectly rational. But as I go back, it is, and I explain to y'all how I felt in that moment, it's like I felt completely, sorry, I felt completely comfortable in that situation, man. It's funny how I ain't gonna say some people because some people really can't <laughs> really can't manage you know high stressful situations. However, I know me personally how I can still be fully functional in high pressure situations. Yeah, man, but I want to know, like, shit, man, how do y'all manage? You know, when when high-pressure situations come about, like, how do you deal with it? Do you go head on? Do you shy away from it? Or what? Like, how do you deal with that? (laughs) Some people run away from their issues, man. And some people like to take them on head first. But, you know, some some for y'all niggas to think about. Some for y'all niggas to think about. (laughs) You feel me? I know I done probably brought this up quite a few times, man. And (laughs) jokingly, of course, of... You know, about me running for, like, some type of political office, man. But I'm almost thinking I'm about to do this shit, man. Because it's a lot of niggas doing some fuck activity, my boy. My brethren. It's a lot of niggas doing some wild, goofy shit, my boy. No kizzy, my guy. Man, I saw some shit the other day, man. And... This is no knock to that young man, man. Shout out to that. Shout out to uh, that young man, Jewel Jones, man. Holla. <laughs> the holla guy. I I saw his, you know, I guess the, the body cam footage or the dash cam footage of, you know, his arrest. I'm not sure how long ago this was. This might have been maybe a couple months ago. However, you know, details are starting to come out. However. And first of all, I want to say, like, keep your head up, my guy. 
because as a black man, they looking for any reason to like really shit on this man. They looking for any fucking reason to shit on this dog. However, man, you got to know how to move correctly, man, in those types of situations, man. You know, when you when you up there, you know, laughing and kicking up in the white people face, man, you got to know how to move in those situations because they can be your friend today and shit on your ass in the next, man. Believe that. But just to kind of give, you know, people that might not be familiar, you know, a little backstory or whatever. Um, A few months ago. Police, you know, found him on the side of the road, you know, double the um, the level of intoxicity, if that's even a word, you know, with, you know, with a woman that was not even coherent over on the side of the road, you know, pull him out the car. Now, allegedly, they say, you know. His pants was unbuttoned. This woman didn't have no pants on and she was drunk and couldn't even make out a full sentence or whatever. And I've heard or from what I've read, they said that, you know, they called the ambulance, took the took the young lady, you know, I think whether it was to the nearest hospital or home or whomever or whatever. And in that moment, Jewel thought he was going to get in that ambulance and go with her. And they was like, slow your roll, big dog. You know, we need to figure this shit out. And um, in that moment, from what I can see, you know, the, the officers asked for Jewel to show his ID. Of course, he didn't want to show it. He was drunk. You know, started throwing his weight around, talk about who he know. And I know Gretchen personally. We're going to get you fired talking to the police. And do you know who I am? I run the the the, the police budget. Y'all ain't going to get a dime from me type shit and became aggressive. And eventually they wrestled his ass down to the ground and, you know, couple expletives and however they arrested him and pepper sprayed him and you know of course the cameras go off they probably fucked him up a little bit but you can clearly tell that the young man was intoxicated man just by the way of his actions and how he was talking he was clearly not all the way in his in his head man i know i joked about this quite a few times man and I joke about it with my dad often. It'd be, it's serious. You know, it'd be serious conversations in the middle of that. However, I always joke about like running for like some type of political office, whether it was like mayor or some type of representative or whatever. But knowing like my personal history with the law and my multiple misdemeanors, like, I know for a fact, as soon as I even think about running, they're going to bring up my legal history and be like, hell no, fuck that. We ain't letting this nigga up in this bitch. Fuck no. But let's take it. Let's take it a little further, man. Let's talk about how somebody is already in that position of you know, some type of political office. And what makes it crazy is that the guy is so young, man. He's black. Not only, like, it makes it look bad for anybody else that want to do it, it also makes it, makes it look bad on his part, too. Even if a young man wanted to come up and, and do this shit, man, don't white people ain't gonna let that shit happen, man. They already let one nigga get in. What makes you think they gonna let another one get in after this bullshit, my dog? And this is not to bash him. 
or whatever. However, you just learn from these mistakes, man. One thing I always got mad about, whether it's family or anybody in particular, I would I always hate when the motherfucker always bring up like some old shit that I did in the past. Like, for an example, I I would always hate when. And I love my pops. I would always hate when a situation might come about and he'd bring up like my old like legal situations in the past. And be like, oh, see, <laughs> if you would have never did that, then this would have happened. It's like my nigga. I didn't already learn from this shit. This shit happened 10 years ago when I was a, a young fella. You feel me? When I didn't know any better. When I was going through something. But And I feel like the same in this situation It's like yeah You fucked up But now you gotta live with that Now you need to bounce back Now you need to do right Now you need to correct those wrongs my nigga Because this shit could've went Absolutely worse (laughs) Because they blowing niggas out here Police don't give a fuck You might've just got away had that would have been any of us, we probably would have got blue. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe that isn't he like a like a police officer or wasn't he was a police officer of some sort. I'm pretty sure he probably had a pistol on him. I've seen him in a uniform before. I'm sure he probably had a pistol. And if he was an officer, I'm sure he probably have a pistol somewhere near. At any moment, this shit could have went wrong. But this is not to bash him, man. This is to tell him, like, yo, learn from this situation, man. Bounce back. Man, it it looked bad. However, keep doing right by you. Keep doing right by your family. Keep doing right by the people that voted you in to this this position, man. Do what you got to do. Stop doing that goofy shit. Do better, my nigga. Man, I remember. I, man, I remember. I remember when he got voted into that that position, um, that position or that seat or whatever the fuck. My nigga spits instantly, man. He texts me that day like, "Yo, look at this young man." I'm like, "Damn, man! Somebody done beat me to it." Look at my niggas out here, man. Don't know this nigga personally, but I'ma say you my nigga. But look at my nigga out here, man, doing his motherfucking thing, man. Out there, you know, running running his little, you know, his little position, you feel me? Man, how player is that, man? Just imagine you pull up on bitches like, man, you feel me? I run this shit, you feel me? I know people in high places, you feel me? Nigga, how player is that, my nigga? But, like I said, man, this ain't, this ain't to bash old dude. But you got to do better than that, man. How you going to be getting drunk, man, with the bitches, my nigga? So drunk to the point that you can't drive. You on the side of the road. Both you and the bitches fucked up. Why you ain't? Come on, man. You could have caught a little buzz and took the little freaky league back to the crib. Oh, you feel me? I'm sure that's where you was probably headed to. But you can't get so drunk, whereas you can't even make it to the crib, my nigga. And I'm going to address the elephant in the room, man. I'm going to address the elephant in the room. I'm going to address the elephant in the room. I got to say it three times with my Dr. Umar shit. Because I need to address the elephant in the room. Man, I pray to God, man. This situation don't get worse from what it is right now. Because from what I've read, it is not pretty. It's not pretty. I really hope that the woman that you was with, man, is solid. I really hope. Because at any moment, that woman could have been like, shit, I don't know what happened. I don't know how my pants got off. I wasn't even trying to do that. That's the worst thing that could happen at this moment, my nigga. I really hope this situation do not get worse from here. Do better, my dog. And I ain't nobody to judge. 
but I know what it's like to be in that position of just fuck and you just fucked up. I know what it's like. Yeah. I took the uh, yeah, I didn't got aggressive with the police too. <laughs> I didn't took the boys on the on a on a slight little fleeing and eluding. You know, I didn't probably try to resist arrest thinking I can get away. Nah, my nigga, they gonna catch your ass. Oh boy. And when they caught up with me, my guy, they snatched my ass the fuck up out that window with the quickness and was not gentle with it at all. <laughs> Believe me, I know, my guy. Believe me. Believe that. But in all honesty, though, just learn from that shit, man. I see a lot of motherfuckers. Excuse me. Let me let me sip my Starbucks refresher real quick. Excuse me. Mm. Good little mango dragon fruit. You feel me? I see a lot of motherfuckers out here. And what I and what I hate is is like fake ass preachers and uh uh do do gooders motherfuckers that, that that think they shit don't stink you feel me and the last thing that i want to do is come on this motherfucker and act like i'm better than anybody man i'm a fuck up just like y'all man nigga i fuck up all the time man nigga i piss my girl off which is my fiance now by the way I piss off my son, I piss off my family, I piss off my mom, my dad, I'm pretty sure my sister, my brother, Spiff, Solo, I piss everybody the fuck off. But one thing I don't consider myself as is being perfect, my nigga. It's a lot of motherfuckers that's out here that's, that think they motherfucking perfect, nigga. Nobody is motherfucking perfect, my guy. And I hate motherfuckers that try to portray that way. It's a lot of motherfuckers I see, you know, Instagram preachers, uh, fucking think they know it all motherfuckers, Twitter activists, Instagram pastors. Nigga, fuck ya, nigga. Nigga, yo shit stank just like the rest of us motherfuckers out here, my nigga. And motherfuckers actually be following around these motherfuckers, reposting shit. <laughs> Thinking they word is the motherfucking gospel, my nigga. Nigga, if you want to know some motherfucking gospel, you better start reciting some Bible scriptures, my nigga. Do that. Well, shit, even with that, I don't even know who the fuck wrote that shit, man. But that's another story for another day. I don't want to get my grandma mad. That's another person I'm probably about to piss off. But that's another story for another day. We're going to carry on. But I saw some shit the other day, man. And I saw it, you know, circulating, you know, various media platforms and whatever about. And it might even be an old clip. I saw like a clip of like Steve Harvey talking about how he's incapable of having like female friends and. And he go on to explain about, you know, niggas is waiting for that moment when there's like a chink in the armor of a female and they're going to dive right on in. And in that moment, um, the female interviewer, you know, asked him like, like, how many men do you think think this way? He was like, oh, 99.9 percent of us, you know, we all think like that. You feel me? We all think like that, you feel me? I don't know what the fuck happened to Steve Harvey, my nigga. But when the fuck he became the spokesperson of us? <laughs> At one point, did we elect this nigga to be the, the grand speaker of us real niggas out here, you feel me? I'm going to keep it a whole bean bean with niggas, dog. That nigga don't speak for me. 
<laughs> I guess I'm in that that point one percent of uh niggas that that ain't gonna be jumping on these bitches. You feel me? I guess I'm in that that point one percent, and I can I feel like I can speak for you know some of the niggas that I that I that I hang around as with as well, and can say like that nigga don't speak for us, like we all ain't jumping down bitches' throats like that to fuck on them. I'm very much so capable of having, like, female friends. Now, I could tell you like this. I know niggas that can't have female friends is always trying to fuck on them. I could tell you that. However, I feel like it was a reach when he said 99.9% of all men think this way. And I respect... Steve Harvey as a person, but don't don't speak about me, man. Don't speak about me. I think that whole uh, what was that whole ass book that that think like a man, act like a woman, that bullshit. I think, and I'm pretty sure this probably might have been an old ass clip when this shit was circulating the shade room and and different platforms or whatever. He might have been trying to sell books at the moment, or God knows what. However, it's like my nigga, like, eh, this shit kind of lame, dog. Even I feel like he don't even believe himself when he say that type of shit. I feel like at this point, he's somewhat of a, and I could be totally wrong with this shit, man. I could be totally wrong with this shit, but. I don't even think he believed that shit. Like, I mean, I feel like he's catering to women that really don't know their worth and their self-value. I feel like he's praying on those women that are lacking confidence and self-esteem and and shit like that thinking like oh i'm gonna i'm gonna tell these bitches the reason why you know me and act like this is because of that like my nigga slow your roll my dog i can honestly tell you haven't probably been around too many bad bitches in your day my nigga i can probably i can pr- I'm going to use his shit. I'm 99.9% sure he hasn't had too many bad bitches in his day. Shit, I let you, I, I let y'all niggas... I let Spiff tell you this, man. It's been plenty of times we done been around beautiful women. None of us tried to fuck them. Sometimes we just want just bad bitches around. Just as friends. I got quite a few female friends. I ain't never tried to fuck them. Never did anything sexually with them. Sometimes I just want a female's point of view. Sometimes I just want to see what the fuck is going on. Sometimes you need a you need a woman's vision sometimes, man. Matter of fact, shit. As y'all know, one of my one of my one of my best friends is a female. Sometimes I gotta hit her up like, yo, am I tripping? You know, I might be having like a little situation with the lady and shit. Like, yo, let me run this by, 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 you know, by my female friend real quick. Let me, let me hit her up, see what she talking about, man. Maybe, maybe I'm not seeing something. She was like, yeah, me, you tripping. All right. Cool. At no point I tried to fuck on her. Shit. Nigga, we had a, we had a female that was, uh, uh, that was gay. Cool as fuck. I ain't even tried to fuck on her. Shit. But I could tell, like, niggas that think like that, man. Niggas ain't never had no bad bitches around, man. <laughs> like my nigga Juan say, why you bragging about that Benz? You ain't used to toys. Why you bragging about that shit, nigga? You ain't used to bitches, my nigga. Thirsty ass. <laughs> Fuck is you talk about, man? Nigga. Ah, damn, man. 
Nigga so damn horny and shit, dog. All these goddamn bad bitches around. You think niggas trying to fuck all these hoes, nigga? The fuck is you talking about, dog? I'ma just speak for myself. Ain't nobody trying to fuck all these bitches, man. Ain't nobody looking for moments of weakness. Niggas ain't looking for no damn chink in their arm, am I, nigga? Shit. Sometimes nigga just want some soft legs around just to chill, nigga. Talk, nigga. Nigga, let's listen to some drizzy, nigga. Drink some wine. Fuck is you talking about, dog? But yeah, man. What about you horny niggas, man? Y'all horny niggas always trying to fuck on the bad bitches, my nigga. Shit, you could pass up on a bitch or two. Fuck is you talking about? <laughs> but yeah, man. In the meantime, I just wanted to rap with y'all niggas. Yeah. Just wanted to kick it with y'all, man. Sometimes we gotta do these one-off pies, man, to kind of get my thoughts off. You know, it's therapeutic in a way. But I appreciate all thirteen of y'all, man, for always showing up, showing love, giving feedback when it's due. I couldn't do this shit without y'all, man. I can't believe that right now it's been. Honestly, four years of me doing this whole podcast shit, man. I've learned and I can I can honestly say that over these last four years, man, I've grown a lot, man. I've grown so, so much. And I'm only getting better with time like wine, you feel me? I can't wait to see what the next four years is going to look like. I can't wait. I cannot wait, man. But as always, man, I appreciate all 13 of y'all for always showing up, showing love, giving feedback when it's due. It's the motherfucking Drug Table Talk podcast, man. Remember, we don't sell drugs. We sell knowledge and slang game. Hey, let's go be stars up in this bitch, man. I'm out.